Texas falling to the Washington Huskies. Final score, 37 to 31 in this one. Guys, I got to start. Michael Penix Jr., certified dude. This guy is a wizard back there. I said it weeks ago, Jaden Daniels deserved to win the Heisman Trophy. I think it was the right pick. But I tell you, and you know what's a shame? What's a shame is we didn't get to see Jaden Daniels and Michael Penix Jr. go head-to-head and duke it out in a ballgame. It's a shame Jaden Daniels' defense did not allow him that opportunity. But admittedly, guys, I had not watched a ton of Washington football this season, right? Hadn't watched a ton of it. Sitting down and watching Michael Penix Jr. work, watching Michael Penix Jr., I mean, there's not a throw he can't make. There's not a window he can't fit it in. There's not a play on a football field he cannot make. Texas was not even able to get him down one time. And, you know, was the pass rush not there for Texas? Was Texas not as good as they needed to be up front? I think that's a fair take, but also you got to give a lot of credit to Penix, man. There were many times a lesser quarterback or a guy with, you know, the pocket awareness, not having the pocket awareness like a guy like Penix has or, or you know, not having the speed, the agility, the quickness, what have you. I think Texas gets the quarterback down two or three times. The way Michael Penix Jr. was able to work in the pocket, you know, maneuver, move around, create plays, all the different arm angles he's throwing at. I mean, it, it was it was truly fun to watch. I, I mean, it's just that and that dude, a guy like that's going to give you an opportunity to win every single game. And we knew, guys, this is going to be a back and forth affair, offensive shootout, and it delivered, I thought, certainly. But you look at Texas, guys, that sleepy third quarter. I mean, that, that was a game where it felt like you needed to score on nearly every single possession. Texas obviously shut out in that third quarter. That was the difference in the football game, guys. 21 to 21 at half. Washington with some great second half adjustments. They come out, outscore Texas 10 0 in the third quarter. And uh, that was all she wrote. You know, Texas obviously with the opportunity right there at the end, uh, you, you know, could have thrown the game winning touchdown pass. And again, the game lived up to the hype, right, guys? For the first time, it feels like in forever, we got two great semifinal games. My biggest takeaway, though, guys, from this game, and again, Texas had no answer defensively. You about 400 passing yards, I believe it was. Uh, the official stats here, again, Penix was special in this one. Uh, 29 of 38, 430 yards. 430 yards for Michael Penix Jr. I mean, that is insane. Those numbers are crazy. His receivers, Odunes, Polk, Westover, making big plays all night long. McMillan as well, making big plays all night long. Had enough of a running game with over 100 yards rushing for the Huskies. But it all begins and ends with Michael Penix Jr. I mean, what we watched last night, guys, that kid is really, really special. And, and I will say this, guys. I did not give Washington enough credit, flat out. I, I'm here to own up to it. I didn't give them enough credit. I thought, okay, you know, Penix is a nice story. You know, he's played well, Pac-12. Okay, we'll, we'll see how he fares against a physical Texas defense. I really thought the physicality of Texas was going to be able to, to stand up to Michael Penix Jr. And, and, and limit him on some things. And no, they never had an answer. They never had an answer. And so a game that we expected guys to go back and forth on the offensive side of the football, an offensive shootout, it lived up to that hype, of course, with Washington out dueling the Longhorns and you know, we're going to talk about this guy's more tomorrow. I think it'll be a fun conversation in regards to analyzing where we stand right now with Texas and Oklahoma now, right? That was their last game, respective games, not being members of the SEC. My thoughts on them in regards to uh, just where they sit entering SEC play. But, you know, I think Texas is going to be fine. We have the conversation. Is Texas back? Did they need to win it all to be back? I think having this type of season – even though you didn't win the semi, even though you, you didn't go to the national title, Texas being a premier program and a prominent program, I'm willing to go on record and say that I think for the most part they're back. We're really going to get the answer next year. Texas goes and wins double-digit games again, and they're back in the playoff. Okay, Texas is back. They're back as one of the premier programs in college football. This season, 
great first step towards that. But a great game, guys. The Sugar Bowl lived up to all the hype. Michael Penix Jr., certified freaking dude who can make all the throws, fit it in all the windows. He is an absolute magician. Nicknaming Merlin back there in the pocket. And it is going to be an electric game watching him take on that Michigan defense. 